Hi again. It's now the 31st of August, so it is the last day in August. And yesterday I was watching Ben Green here on YouTube and he was doing a recommendation tag and I thought it would be fun to do it and um, it might show like a broader range of what I'm reading and some other of my favorite books that I haven't mentioned before uh, but I, I also wanted to talk about I've had a really good last few days uh, the day before yesterday I had book club with the fantasy uh, book club and we were talking about Piranesi and I was feeling it just like right when I was reading it that it would be a really good book to do to do in the book club because there are interesting perspectives you can have on it and different ways of reading it so it was just really really fun so we were basically talking for two hours about it and yeah I just yeah yeah I love book clubs I love talking about books with many people especially when when it becomes those sort of days where there are people who really love it and people who dislike it because I think it gives a more interesting discussion of a book and people can give like yeah I for me it didn't fit because and for me it really fit me as a reader because and sort of like yeah and maybe during that discussion someone can sort of like oh yeah that is a, a, a beautiful thing or interesting thing or whatever about the book so yeah and I was looking forward to it the whole uh, day because it was quite late and yeah it was so much fun and the next book is Vita Nostra written about written by two Ukraine authors, uh, I think, uh, like a romantic partnership. I think one of them has died in the last few years or something. I will write the na their names up on the screen because I'm not going to try and pronounce it. That wouldn't be fair. My, <laughs> like, I don't know the Russian language. So it was chosen by someone who chose it because it was uh, someone had written that it was similar to Piranesi and they also like Piranesi so I might read it. Magic apparently has a bigger part in it so I will see how the, the language in the book is if it fits me and sort of like if it's a plot heavier Mm, sorry, my cat is licking the floor. Plot heavier, the sort of fantasy book that isn't always for me. So I might, I might read it. So yeah. And then yesterday I had a bit of a Zoom call with some of my writing friends. I was writing on my essay, trying to finish it. And my other friend who's moving, she was packing and we were talking. So we usually do when we had have those Zoom calls. We write for 45 minutes and then talk for 50 minutes. And sort of like do that for as long as we can. And it usually means that we are all really productive. I uh, wrote a page and a half and yeah. It felt really good and I got some text out of my head which I've had trouble like 
putting into words and like feeling like I don't know if it's if it's worthwhile. So yeah, and I also decided to go along with my writing friends in two weeks. Uh, for the last few years, we've done like smaller writing trips together. And the first one we did together was meant to do was meant to be during the spring of the pandemic, which we had to push forward. And we went to one of to her parents, her family's like house in the uh, what's it called in English? How do you pronounce it? Archipelago in Stockholm. Yeah, just a very small, gorgeous island. So I decided to go with them in two weeks over the weekend. And yeah, my working schedule will just have to be fitted around that rather than me ignoring the trip just because I don't have a schedule yet. So let's get into this tag then. I have the list. I have a notebook. I bought it from Etsy. You can like I can see if I can put her link down below because I really liked it. She has uh, a lot of different covers and you can show choose a specific words, a specific word and then she put uh, the definition below. So I chose the word create and it's poppies and yeah it's I do prefer like hardbound notebooks but yeah it works so the first uh, question is a book that you tell people is your favorite I have a small pile down at the floor uh, when it was my turn in the book club I chose this book another book that I will mention and two other books that I will mention but this I would say if, if people would ask what is my favorite book I would probably say this because it has so many of my favorite things in literature in it and that is a uh, read out autobiography autobiography I read sorry by yeah, Carson, sorry, mind blank. And so the things that makes me love it is uh, the Greek like mythology parts that it is based on the myth of Heracles and Geron, the monster which uh, Heracles has to kill in order to get his hero status. I can't remember how many things it is he has to do, but yeah, it's one of them. And she makes it into a very different thing. It's sort of a modern retelling of it. I love modern retellings of like classical things like myths and, and like old stories that have classical status today and it's made into a love story between Geron is it called Geron? <laughs> no, no, I'm like confused Geron, yeah and he is still a red monster tending to his like herd of sheep, the same as in the story but he's also like a gay boy, confused about his love, and who loves photography and goes around fo fo taking photos of Heracles. And, and another thing that I loved about it is the language. Obviously, it's um, it is a, a, a poem. You can say. It is written in verse. Uh, I also love the form. It has a very, very weird form. 
so we read it in my book club uh, and I convinced my friends to read it and I <clears throat> this are like the way she she has chosen to divide it uh, I love the the intro the intro to the whole story I love especially my favorite part is probably like appendix C or the the whole appendixes because they are very weird and then we get into the sort of uh, poetic sort of story and what else uh, yeah the plot and the love the love story of it The second story of it as well, she wrote the continuation called Red Dock, which I found that people don't talk about that much here. Uh, the second one, uh, a book that is uh, your guilty pleasure or a book genre, I didn't write the whole question. And I found that quite difficult. I don't think of books as guilty pleasures. I read what I want to read when I want to read it. When I have studied uh, creative writing, I know that for my friends who does genre writing and uh, like fantasy, there has been some teachers who have insinuated that that is not true literature. <sighs> yeah, that just makes me so pissed off because all reading and writing is good writing. Especially now when people are not right, reading enough. But I agree with Ben Green, like erotic re writing is not something that people really talk about for obvious reason in a society that is very taboo, taboo about sex. So I can mention a specific book actually. And that is um, Calm. 12 erotic, erotic short stories by Jenny Beth. Um, she is, was the lead singer of the French punk band Savages, a band that especially their debut album I truly loved and I followed her career. She does like talks of books on her Instagram so yeah, you might follow her, she has a book club, I know, but a lot of it is French books, so I usually just write it down in hopes that it will be translated someday. And this is very well written. It is transgressive in some parts, it mentions like things like BDSM sort of sex and polyamory relationships it also has photography of her I know there is a bigger like heartbound version of this book with more pictures bigger pictures in like very well very good quality so if that sounds interesting I recommend it and a book that everyone loved but you didn't. Usually I know when I read about the book if I will if I will like it or not. But I so I knew that when well, people wouldn't be for me. But I saw the TV show. I did quite like it. I thought the acting was really good. I thought the chemistry was really really good. So I was like, yeah, but let's give it a chance. But I was mostly interesting, interested to see how Sara Rooney has, has had in the book handled some of the things that I found really difficult to see on scene. And 
that is that I can't even remember what the characters are called. Uh, a big part of the TV show and the books is that we see the female characters like traumatic like events. We see that she has a, the opposite of a supportive family, which is what he has. And he gets into a depression in university and she really supports him despite being in Sweden at the time actually and like yeah go to therapy yeah you should really do that it will really help you yeah being so supportive and then we have the the sex scene I can't remember it. I read the book so fast, but we have this sex scene in the series where she suggests that she, he should hurt her. And he knows the stuff she has been through to some degree. That about her previous partner, um, yeah. And he doesn't want to, which, yeah, it should always be consensual. And we have this line where it isn't clear whether she wants pain in sex as for because she likes that, she enjoys that, or because it's a way of punishing herself. Then we have the scene where she is very badly hurt by her brother. He comes and save her. And then we just get nothing. Her like traumatic events is just like it doesn't really matter. It is as if they thought that. And yeah, that makes made me really pissed off. That a female author would write that and not and decide to care for her male a male character but not for her female character and I don't think I know a lot of people have said that it's experimental and stuff I don't think that removing quotation marks is experimental it's like the lowest bar of experimentalism you can find and I know also people said it would be a really difficult book to transform into a TV show because it's so internal I don't think that's true either because it, it is a lot of plot it is a lot of things moving forwards a lot of events a lot of like um, like time stamps, like let's stop talking about that one. I also wanted to write and mention the writing of Knausgård. Yeah, he is someone if you think he's big in the UK, like you can't, <laughs> you can't like avoid him if you live in the Scandinavian countries. He like the other day he decided to say yes to this prize called the Lenin Prize and it was discussed a lot, the controversy of that, the whole prize is controversial. I don't like the writings of Knausgaard, or F F Knausgaard. I know how to pronounce it, Knausgaard. I found, find it self-obsessed in the worst way and like I found, find that his writing is just like wanting to cause controversy a lot like with uh, his my main camp what's it called in English the writings in that like the same with 
deciding to accept the prize, like if people are always talking about you, you're always relevant, that sort of way. Uh, that was a very long answer. The book you've read the fastest? Fastest? <laughs> the fastest? Uh, I found it very difficult to answer. When I read a physical book, I usually read very fast. Like, I, the same with audiobooks. I have it on like 1.7, 1.8 speed. Um, what I talked about reading, what I talked about when reading Aqua Viva, that I usually read a book like that the first time and then like poetry or more poetic or more like intense, complicated, doing a second read through slower. So I don't think I can read an answer. Uh, this question was really interesting. A book that deserves more hype. I have two books here. This. It's written by a Danish author called Bjorn Rasmussen. So I can't really find if it has been translated to English, but if it has I will put the title on the screen. But if you're from any of the Nordic countries, I know it can be find, found in Swedish and Danish, but I assume also uh, Norwegian. So then I would recommend it. It's the story of, uh, I would say it's quite an autobiographical story because the main character is, is called Björn, the same as the author. And we begin by following him and his sort of weird relationship with his family. The whole book is quite weird. And he begins, he does a lot of horse riding, loves horses, and he begins a relationship with his horse, ri horse riding teacher. And it's quite a like BDSM relationship. There's some references to SH, so if that's something that is a no no for you, like that's, yeah, that's a true warning. But I had no issues with that. I think he did it in a way where you can see that it's something that he understands and it's amazingly written it's a book I pick up when I feel like I can't read because yeah it's amazing it's so well written it's so like it's a very short book but it's well, very dense yeah I tap so much because it's one of my favorites Next book. The, ne um, the next question is a book that is becoming a movie or a TV show. No clue. Never followed that whole thing. Like, if it is a book that I love and it becomes a film or a TV show, of course I watch it. But I never know of it. So yeah, no idea. Unless it's like a Lord of the Rings size of a movie, then I will obviously hear of it. A book that you've reread re the most, and I have a few to mention here. I can start off with mention mentioning again what biography I've read. I probably read it the first time eight years ago or so and because there are so many layers of it it really you get so much from it by rereading it. Another one is actually a, a play by my favorite playwright Sarah Kane. She wrote 
was introduced to me by my friend who was doing a, a sort of aesthetic uh, choice for her school before university and so they were reading her and he, I think she was saying like I think she is something for you and the play in question is her one called Cleansed this is her uh, English Swedish collection I also have it in English but this one specifically is just yeah super interesting she's a uh, an author that I she <laughs> she's a playwright that I love Sally she died all too early from suicide uh, especially her play uh, Roses 448 uh, is very much um, a sign of her depression and her mental illness but this one is a weirder play. I've never seen any of her on stage, sadly. You follow a, a gang of characters. There are ones like uh, Graham. There are ones like um, Carl and Rod, who has a romantic relationship. There is Tinker, who is thought to have been, uh, been influenced by a tabloid journalist who basically yeah, tinkers with them, uh, manipulates them, uh, uses them. And it's also someone that it's also uh, writing that I look to when I want inspiration. The second one is a Swedish author that was very much inspired by Sarah Kane, and it's so Street Spy, and this is her book Drömfakulteten. In English, it is called I think The Faculty of Dreams. It was uh, nominated for a long list for the International Booker Prize, I think 2011. When I read it the first time, it instantly became my favorite book. It was for many years like main inspiration of my own writing, inspiration um, like experimental writing, fragmentary writing and I was attracted to it because it is a literary fantasy about Valerie Solanas who was associated with Andy Warhol and actually in real life shot him and here we follow her as she wrote the Scam Manifesto, the Society of Cutting Up Men, which is a text I have also, and but also as she is very much like downtrodden in a motel room, very poor and dying. It was made into a play, she's also a playwright, so I just by it. and yeah, I love all of her writing, but this is my favorite and I've read it many times. It has some parts of it that is written like like the dialogue of a play. It's quite thick for a for a favorite book of mine, but yeah. Uh, a book from a genre you don't typically read, um, that was difficult. I mean, in the past I usually read uh, literary fiction, experimental fiction, as I've said before, but now I sort of expanded that and read more freely, in part thanks to my writing group, so sci-fi fantasy. 8 to 12 years old, but I say something I don't read too much of is memoir, 
I used to read more of it before, like memoirs from a lot of mus musicians, punk musicians that I love, rock musicians. And I want to get back into it again, read more from especially authors. I want to read the Deborah Levy ones. A book that deserves all the hype that it gets. Yeah, a lot of the books that I mentioned here. Uh, but I would definitely mention Ocean One. Yeah, definitely Ocean One. And On Earth, we're briefly gorgeous. I have the Swedish edition here. We also read it in my book club. Very much a favorite. Uh, has been a favorite author of mine since I read his first um, poetry collection and you can definitely see his background in poetry in the language in this book and I'm just really happy to see that he yeah the read reviews he got for it when this was released both like it seems like in the UK and here in Sweden as well. Uh, a book uh, you usually give uh, a recommendation of God I wrote this weird a book you usually give when you ask for a recommendation. I mean that's all Usually, that's that's quite a weird one, but since I know quite quite a lot of creative people, like if someone has read Just Kids by Patti Smith, I usually recommend them to read that, because I find that it gives you a lot of recent to stay with that creative lifestyle and continue chasing your dreams and continue with what is important for you. And she is someone whose music I loved since I was 15. So when it was released I bought it directly and I read her essays and her poetry and she's released something related now to her photography that I really want. I still haven't read M Train because this is so good and I'm sort of intimidated but yeah so that one. Uh, I also want to mention uh, Faces in the Crowd by Valeria Luiselli which I mentioned before. Um, if, because it's a good book to recommend someone, because uh, I found find that most people don't read a lot of books from countries that aren't like uh, uh, Europe, US, that sort of thing. If I'm friends with them, maybe they are would be a fit for this cool and weird book. And uh, if I'm friends with them, maybe they are writers and would find this in interesting as well. And I would also ask them if if they ask me for a recommendation. Have you read uh, Michael Axelsson, which is a Swedish author? She usually wrote, writes on like social issues. This is a book that yeah broke my heart, and it's called April Hexan, I think the April Witch in English or something similar. It's about four women, one in one in a in a hospital, almost like a palliative hospital. 
she has very very severe uh, disabilities she has uh, I can't remember what it's called but a very severe type of epilepsy that can remove some of her yeah that, that in, in itself can make her more disabled and then she has these like paranormal abilities but it's not a fantasy book I should say it's a like litfic book there are four three other women that she considered considers to be her sisters and through her abilities she watches she watches all of them uh, uh, in the body of a, of a bird I think like a crow or a raven and it's it's yeah, five star book, one of the most amazing books I've read. Uh, let's continue. A book that has your favorite character. Okay, this isn't a very literary answer, but a nostalgic one. But I love Remus Lupin in Harry Potter. And a book you could wish you, a book. You wish you could live in. I mean, with the type of books I usually read, I wouldn't want to live in them. I wouldn't want to live in something chaotic and confusing and dark and weird. And, but I wouldn't mind living in the school of Harry Potter to connect with the other answer. But like, not thinking about it like just kids pet smith like being another uh, part of her like new york creative like life would be cool even though i have no interest uh, interest of going to new york um, a book you thought you hate but you ended up loving I don't really go into reading books that I don't think I would like unless it is in my book club so I thought of a friend's favorite book that we read there and it was what's it called okay so the uh, the NK James in the first book we read is called the fifth season and by that point, this was two and a half years ago, I hadn't read basically any fantasy except Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. It was also uh, quite a thick book, maybe like 400 pages. And I was like, oh god, am I going to read it? Am I going to <laughs> like it? And I just flew through it and yeah, found, found the characters uh, she had created really like uh, well built and believable and the uh, story was really engrossing in a good way and yeah the whole fantasy world was was a fantasy world that really appealed to me. It deals with um, uh, oppression, which you can read through uh, uh, the lens of the society we have today. Like, I think you should be able to read good fantasy books, like being able to uh, interpret them that way and after I that I read the uh, second and third book like so quickly because I wanted to know how this like the story ended because it was a trilogy and I hadn't read any adult trilogy since Lord of the Rings and when I read them yeah, I was under 18, so it was 
that was nice and surprising and yeah. Um, number 14 a book that made you cry. I'm not a big crier um, and I usually don't choose books that are very sad and deals with themes of loss and death and a severe illness but two books I could think of were uh, what's it called in English in Swedish it's called Arvungliya uh, of by Vigdis <laughs> uh, and the sort of family dynamic she has created or grown through from her own life if you have a family or background that is a bit dysfunctional it is a very difficult read and but I also found it healing and so I think I cried reading that one uh, but I mentioned another book here where I cried uh, oh yeah uh, the April Witch but it was also a difficult time in my own life when I read it so also that because it is a very like moving character you follow in that one and the last question a book you wish you could read for the first time which I found difficult I was thinking maybe some sort of classic so my mind was going to maybe like Frankenstein maybe that one or another Swedish book uh, the author is called Alekandre uh, and the book is called Budins Unge in Swedish and I was introduced to it through my creative writing course and I of course knew of her as an author because I would say sh she's also someone who deserves more praise that's true because like I follow her book uh, uh, her name uh, tag on Instagram and it's like not a lot she's not mentioned a lot on like in like culture discussions in Sweden but yeah some some but yeah, more of almost a cult reader despite being really well reviewed. But it's it's uh, it it was where I first heard of the term uh, the abject. Uh, um, it was a lecture, and I was like, okay, this like fits into so many books I read and like what. I find interesting to write about myself and um, we follow a character a young 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 teenager maybe who starts going through teenagehood and like feeling like her body isn't her own she lives with her uncle and a sister if I remember correctly and in this oppressing summer heat and it's so much in her own head and she like doesn't really understand anything that's happening or going on around her it when I reread it it reminded me of Shirley Jackson's what's the we always lived in the castle uh, in a way, so I would be curious to know if Kendra was inspired by that one with uh, the character, main character of like a young, younger person and their relationship with the weirder like dysfunctional family not the dysfunctional family but yeah dysfunctional family 
outside uh, uh, the other society and we don't really see that other society except in uh, we always live to the castle when they go there to shop and we see how how they are seen as the other as yeah we get that something has happened but in this book we don't really know what has happened and it would be interesting to go into that one blind again and it's an author I would like to read more of. So yeah, that are my recommendations and hopefully shows you some other books that I love and that mean so much to me. And yeah, thank you for watching.